Hey, y'all. So glad you joined us. Welcome to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. Or if you're watching this on Shaw, welcome to the program. We're super glad you joined us today. I am very delighted today to introduce you to Nahana, Nah Nahani. Oh my God, I know her name, but I, if you watch the program, you know I always scrub people's names, even people I've known for years. Nahani Ackroyd is with us today, and she is a financial planner, and she's just opened herself her own organization. So we're going to talk to her a little bit about that today. Welcome to the program, Nahani. Glad you're here. How are you? I am good, Kathy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, oh, it's always so a pleasure to have you, and I'm so sorry I screwed up your day, but honest to goodness, anybody who knows me knows and you know me well. Yeah, yeah. I do it all the time. I spread yeah, out. But, but, yeah. Well, and my name gets that too, right? So yeah. It's not it an easy name, but it's an absolutely beautiful one for sure. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Once you get it, you'll be okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So you have been working in financial services for a number of years. You're an award-winning broker. I really am delighted to have you on the program today to share with us some of the things that we can be doing to make our finances work better for us. So why don't you tell our audience a little bit about, you know, who you are, what you do, and then we'll take it from there. Sure, Kathy. Yeah. Um, so Nahani Ackroyd, and as of this summer, Ackroyd Financial Services. And uh, I was with Freedom 55 Canada Life uh, since 2014. So um, before that, I actually was in education and a few other paths with not-for-profits and kind of took all those skills and put them together. And so my approach with clients is about teaching. Um, so as much as a client wants to understand about something, that's what I want them to know and to ask me questions. And if you're curious about something, ask, because I'm not psychic, it turns out, but um, I love helping people learn, right? So um, it might be a little bit different approach to some advisors, um, but most of us like to teach people too, because you want people to be excited about this. And the more you know about your financial situation, the more you might be able to control it instead of feeling overwhelmed by it or that you don't know. Lots of people say, I don't know, I don't know, and don't want to look at it. And unfortunately not looking at it doesn't make it better. <laughs> so, yes. um, yeah, so Absolutely. yeah, yeah. So taking a good look at it, getting the information and looking at what it actually does for you as well um, is really important to me, yeah. I, I love the fact that you were a teacher first, an educator first, because at the end of the day, most of us, you know, you're either a person who understands numbers, dollars and cents, or you're not. And I, I, I know that there's a little bit of gray area, but what I've seen is that women in particular are starting to take a much more active role in their finances as compared to 20 or even 30 years ago. We are much more interested in ensuring that our own safety net is in place. Um, do you find that to be the case as well as far as your clientele, or is it a balanced mix? Um. There's definitely a mix in there. I think women approach me more with those questions um, and partly in our age group, right? And if they've never taken care of their money or didn't know things um, are kind of going, okay, you know what? I'm in my fifties. Now it's time because I need to know what it's going to look like. Um, and women often were either on alone sometime in our working path um, or didn't work or in retirement, at some point you may be a widow. Um, and it's often just because women live longer than men typically, and because often marriages, the woman is a bit younger than the man. So there's probably going to be a time in there when a woman is on her own. And so you need to know how to run your money. Um, but I meet men too, who don't know how to run their money. And you know, these gray divorces, um, yeah, you see men who are like, I have no idea what I have or what it's doing because she handled all the money that's very true actually so that that stereotype no longer exists really does it it's shifting i think um yeah. and you know younger couples there's usually just because it doesn't matter male male female female male female couples somebody is usually stronger in the money than the other yeah. and is more interested in it and so that person runs it but we need to make sure the other person understands enough so that they don't feel overwhelmed and they feel they're part of the decision making too. It's not just one person making all the decisions and the other part of a couple is like, I don't know what's going on. Um, I like for everybody to know what's happening. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I think the balance is really important. I think that in couples, we need to be able to ensure that, you know, everybody knows what's happening when it comes to the finances, because you never know what can happen. I mean, we, we hear about yeah. things all the time. And certainly right now, during this time of COVID, there's even more uncertainty than there has been in a very long time. Um, do you think that people, because of COVID, have been paying attention a little bit more to the dollars and cents, or is it actually still pretty much the same? It's, it's kind of interesting. So typically I've often been really busy in the summer because people have been on vacation and they go, do I have to go back to work? And so that's when they're interested in a retirement plan, but I'm getting it like all year this year. It wasn't just in the summer um, where people are finding the stress of work or the, you know, the extra pressures with COVID at home and at work. They're really asking, do I need to keep working and do I have choices? And so doing some retirement planning for a lot more people actually, and a bit younger who are like, you know what, maybe I won't have as much, but I don't have to go and deal with this anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think there's going to be a real shift in employment um, because these anybody, a lot of people who can afford to retire right now are, if they possibly can, um, just, it's been a long haul. Like, oh, I, I remember I was going home for three weeks. So I was like, okay, I can do three weeks. <laughs> and, um, as extroverts, right? Like it's, totally. it's a, yeah, it's been a challenge at times for sure. Um, and it's just so nice to see real faces in person now. Um, did you, I just am curious, and this has nothing to do with the financial side. I'm just <laughs> curious, right? Because I know this happened for me as an extrovert. I, I like, I'm very shy in intimate circles, but out in the public, of course, here I am, extrovert, extrovert. <laughs> you know, I went out for dinner with some people for the first time, maybe, oh, this sounds terrible, but like maybe only three weeks ago, like I didn't yeah. do a lot of socializing. Um, I mean, I, I went I, for July, I celebrated uh, July 1st, the Canada Day yeah. with other people, but that was actually the only, the second time that I'd been out, right? Oh, so that was yeah. probably the first and then out for dinner about three weeks ago or so. And I found that my social skills were just not what right? they used to be like did you do it did yeah because I know how social you are like yeah. You I know? yeah I haven't done any group activities um I went to the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation yeah but like with my friend around the perimeter right like we weren't in the middle of things but we had wore masks too we're outside we're vaccinated but we still not totally comfortable um and, but it was so nice to see faces and people and little kids out. And um, so, yeah, I do feel like my social skills are maybe not what they have been. And even doing hair and makeup so that I could be online with you today. I was like, oh, how do I do that again? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I know. For, this sounds really terrible, but for me, it's putting on the boulder holder, right? I had a whole, you know, it's pajamas in the afternoon and, and you know, something dressy on top. But I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to do this, right? Like, I know. Uh, yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that there's something to be said about retirement. I've known quite a few people in the last little while who have spoken to me about it, that they are on that wave. I know that it's not something that I can do just yet for a multitude of reasons, not just financially, but certainly for a multitude of reasons. There's, there's a social aspect for me that I'm not quite ready to let go of. Having yeah. said that, I also look at the financial picture and I, you know, how much is enough, right? Like how yeah. much is, how much do we really need to be able to do this well? What are your thoughts right. on that? That's a really good question. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, that's a really, I just, I do want to address the part about it's not just the money. Yeah. It is those things about setting up your social networks beforehand. Um, and so I know like near our office at Terminal Park Mall, there's the McDonald's and the Starbucks there. And pre-COVID, there would be groups of people meeting in those, having coffee once a week, every day, yeah. clusters of people having coffee together. And there are still people who are meeting outside and they bring their lawn chairs and they meet. And that's probably, I, my story to myself is that it's like people who retired from the same place and they still get together and talk. So those social networks are so important to set up as part of getting ready for retirement. It's not just the money. Um, you might, and it's timing of year as well. There's all sorts of things play into it and having activities to do. Um, I know somebody who he's just like, I got to read all day. And he'd never really given himself permission before to just read all day. Like what a gift, right? So um, 
yeah but the magic question about how not, how much is enough the it's not a good answer but it depends um it is really different for each person and each unit um and it depends on how much debt you're carrying into retirement if you are what your housing is like um i'm got a lot of people right now like four or five years ago we would say you know what it doesn't matter so much if you're renting in retirement and you can't afford to buy a house, that's okay. But now rent has become really tricky. And I think really vulnerable for like these, especially women I'm meeting in their 60s and 70s, right? Like you've got a pet, you want finding a place where you can keep a pet and where your rent isn't going to go crazy, but you're safe and secure and clean and all those things. I feel like that's gotten less secure for people um, with what's going on in our housing market um definitely renters not as secure um well, the, so, and the amount of rent you know it's not oh, just uh, the uh, inability to find housing which is yeah. really common right now it's that if you can find housing i'm hearing numbers mm -hmm. for bachelor suites that are sitting or one bedroom apartments that are sitting at like 22 and 23 yeah. 2400 dollars yeah. a month and i'm yeah. you know even with uh, it, on the lower mainland and on Vancouver Island, the government has been quite generous in saying here we're going to create this social housing that we can bring the price lower, but even the rents and social housing with subsidies, <laughs> heavy duty subsidies are $1,800. Yeah. How yeah. are people comfortably yeah. going to have a roof over their head? I, I'm worried that we may see a much higher influx of homelessness in older adults than we've ever seen before unless we can do something about this crisis yeah, yeah. and i i am worried about that too um yeah and so i'm kind of my advice right now has shifted and anybody who's got some lump sums of cash pre-retirement i'm like we need to look at by like can you buy a place um how and so. how to and yeah and there's like i definitely have women who i'm like i wish i could introduce you all to each other right they like, can go maybe you buy a house together right so or somebody buys and but you know that you've got three renters yeah. and you can each have your own space but you share a kitchen or something i don't know like we may have to get more creative um for sure well, that's not so. a bad idea and actually i remember i have quite a few friends who are divorcees I'm one of them yeah. as well. Yeah. And many divorcees have said, well, you know, ditch the man, keep the house, not not the yeah. house yeah. necessarily yeah. that they're living in, but to get yeah. another house, right? And yeah. share amongst women because it's yeah. it seems to be a, yeah. a nesting thing as well. Like, especially for yeah. women, we need to surround ourselves with like-minded people. Yeah. And men may have the same needs. I'm just not Absolutely. a man, right? I can't speak for what they need, but Indeed. often with couples, you know, when we're trying to figure out what would happen if one of you passed away and yeah. often I hear, well, he'll go live in a box in the woods. Like that's the, And he's saying that he's like, I'm good. I don't need much. Um, no, I know. I hear but, that too. Yeah. But you know, if you're thinking you're going to be 30 years in retirement, potentially, how do you want to live, right? Um, well, we're and, living longer. Women are living yeah. longer and men. We're all living longer. Women, I think, outlive men by somewhere between six and 10 years, uh, according to the statistics. I, I'm not exactly positive, so don't quote me if I'm mistaken and you want to, you know, shoot me back an email and say you're wrong, go ahead. It's okay. Uh, but the premise behind it is, is that predominantly speaking, there are more women who reach out for social services, more women who reach out for assistance, help, because they're, they are widows or divorcees or they've been on their own for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, you know, men very often will say, so I'm, this is not to subjugate men in any way, shape or form, right? No, no, very no. clear. Uh, but my friend is a man and he, I said to him, I said, what's going to happen to you if something should happen to your living situation at this time? And he said, oh, he goes, I don't know. Yeah. And I said, yeah. oh, well, what does I don't know mean? And he goes, mm -hmm. oh, you know, maybe I'll just get a little, you know, a camper or a trailer and I'll live in that in the woods. Yeah, it's it's and and there, there's something in there where men, those men who especially now who are getting older now probably made like they're from a generation when the the men and women are from a generation when the men made significantly more income than women typically oh. i do meet women who are older who are have great pensions and great you know are set up really nicely but there's there's that that still playing out that inequality from the 50s 60s 70s is still playing out today in their cpp their pensions their ability you know from then to have saved um 
Yeah, and so it does, I think that's part of what we're seeing in our older women right now. Um, yeah, um, yeah, so yeah, the number, the number that somebody needs in retirement depends. Um, and so what I like to do is just show people, like often people don't know what their kind of pension plan is gonna be. They just have no idea. They're like, I paid in, I'll get something. Um, so let's find out, right? Let's call a kind of pension plan and find out. Let's look at what old age security is. What pensions do you have? What investments do you have? What is your lifestyle like? And that's really where it comes down is important, right? Some people can live on CPP and OAS and another couple hundred bucks a month. Others are like, that is not remotely enough. Like I've talked, I've talked to people who are five or 6,000 a month isn't enough in retirement. They're like, how would I live on that? I'm like, Okay, I got people who, you know, live on twice that for the whole year. <laughs> so I just heard of a woman who was yielding about ten thousand dollars a month. That was what she was getting. And suddenly that all stopped. And she's just like, oh my God, now what am I gonna do? Uh, right. and I to me, ten thousand dollars a month, heck, I should be like, I'd be like in a very different position, I think, <laughs> when I'm putting away than what I'm putting right. away right now. Right. Uh, I, I'm curious on, you know, when we I mean, you just said something to me that was really important. And that was the fact that you could call CPP and, and OAP and figure out what your pensions are. I know that there's a basic pension amount. Is that still true or has that changed? Um, well, old age security is a social benefit in Canada. So at age 65, every Canadian is entitled to a certain amount. Entitled isn't the right word. <laughs> Currently <laughs> eligible for, right. sorry. Even they have to pay into it though, don't they? No, old oh. age security is a social benefit. It's uh, the federal government says they have enough money to offer this to every Canadian. If you make a, more than a certain amount, it can be clawed back. It's called the OAS clawback, um, but it's pretty generous. Some people would think um, in terms of what that allowance is. A Canada pension plan is based on what you've paid in. And you can start drawing on it at 60 or any time after that up to, I think you have to draw on it by 70. Um, and it is based on what you've paid in. And it may be based on if you've been divorced, a uh, combination of the former spouse's entitlement and yours. Um, some people have survivor's pension, which means a spouse has died before they were eligible to collect it. And so their candidate pension plan benefit will be a combination of their, their first, you know, that spouse and their entitlement. Um, and often people are worried they're gonna lose their survivor pension. They call it widow's pension or widower's pension. They're worried they're gonna lose it, but they don't. Um, it just becomes a combination of the pensions right. um, for that person and for the person who passed away. Um, and so it's just looking at those things and trying to go, okay, what are the current rules too? Cause sometimes they do change. Um, and right now where anyone who's paying into Canada pension plan is paying in more than they were as a percentage of their income than they would have been a couple of years ago, because the federal government is trying to increase what we'll receive later. So millennials are getting set up a lot better than we were at the same age. Um, yeah. So right now the average that somebody gets is sort of between seven and 800 a month, but they could get almost 1200 a month if they have contributed fully throughout their working life. Um, and wait until they're 65. If you take it a bit younger, you lose a little bit, but you also have access to that money. And if you wait, you'll get a little bit higher entitlement as well. Yeah. So in many ways, it's worth to wait if you're, if you can, and you're, I mean, the average retirement for many people for many years was 65. That was the magic bullet number that has a lot changed. People are retiring sometimes in their early seventies, mid seventies. Uh, and it's definitely not just because of the money. It's because they have found for themselves something that they truly enjoy and they just feel young, right? They don't yeah, feel yeah that retirement is right for them. A friend of mine just retired and called me yesterday, very delighted, very excited. He's like, oh my God, Cap, I can't believe it. You know, and he's 74. And so okay. he's like, I'm finally going to do this, right? So, <laughs> um, and I was like, oh my God, it's about time. Like, for you, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, and other people are in their 50s, right? And um, other people are in their 50s. And if they can, they, because life yeah. is short, right? We've learned from yeah. COVID, you never, you can't, it's, it's not predictable. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the part of what's the magic number to live on. If we knew when we were going to pass away, we can work backwards, right? Like if you know, you're going to pass away at 96. Okay. We've got a lot of years. 
or if we know it's going to be next year, like I am, like I would be, you know, retired right now and out spending. Exactly. Right? So, exactly. Um, yeah. how would you yeah. like to spend your your next twelve months? For sure, it certainly isn't uh, in the grind, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, even if you love your job, by yeah, the way, exactly. Because, you know, I think that there's something to be said for that. I yeah, I know in my world, I love my job. I love all the work that I've had the privilege to be able to do, and frankly, I feel like I've never worked a day in my life because of it. Uh, which is good. And I still have a lot of responsibilities. So I actually know that I'm working. Even if I say <laughs> that, I, I know that I'm working. Um, when people are making uh, choices, right? Part of, the, part of your role is to advise them of the negative and the positive impacts of the choices that they may make. Um, but, you know, financial um opportunities have changed right things that used to be great money makers have fallen on by the wayside and there are new and more advanced products that are available including uh really taking a look at some of the government initiatives tell me what your thoughts are for people when they first come and call you at your new organization <laughs> um what would happen what happens for them when they call yeah um I just start with, why are you calling, right? What are you after? Um, yeah. Because usually when people call, there's something that's been bugging them for some period of time. And it might be about, I don't know if I can retire or I'm not sleeping because we don't have life insurance or all these things. Um, and so I just start with where the person's at. And, you know, so if you called me and said, hey, I am, you know, I'm in my mid fifties and I'm kind of thinking about retirement, but I have no idea what it looks like. Um, I'll say, okay, cool. Let's talk about that. And I'll say I work with clients a couple of different ways. So one is called fee for service, where if you don't necessarily know if you want to work with me long term, but you'd like to have a plan about what your retirement looks like, for instance, I can do that for you. And there's a cost for that. Or you might go, I've got investments over here. I want to move them to you. I want you to manage them. And I want to plan. And then we talk about what that looks like. And so then there's no charge for the plan, but I get paid by the fund management companies for managing your investments. Um, any advisor you meet with should, you know, do a risk tolerance questionnaire with you about, we're not allowed to invest you any riskier than you say. And so we need to show that we've done this risk question, you know, tolerance questionnaire with someone, everybody's different. Um, and what does that look like, right? So we go through those questions. Where are you at? What do you want? What are your expectations? You know, what are you living on now? Probably, you know, lots of people, almost everyone says, it's not gonna be that different when I retire. Right. So, you know, this is how I live now. This is what I'm expecting to do then. Some people are like, yeah, I got big plans to travel, but they've already traveled some too. Like it's not new. It's not. Um, and that's definitely right now. People are sort of like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to travel. Right. Yeah. So, or how I'm going to feel about it or those kind of things. Um, so it might not be in the immediate future, but so, so some people are probably pushing out their retirement a little bit because they can't travel right now. So like, well, I might as well keep working and then I'll retire in a couple of years. Hopefully all this is sorted out. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, and then mostly meeting people by Zoom these days. Um, our office is technically still closed um, to visitors, although we just found out November 1st, um, we may be allowed to have, actually meet with clients in the office for the first time since March of 2020. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will say that I've enjoyed those open parking spaces though when I'm there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of extra spots. Usually there isn't. Your office is rather on the busy side. It so is, full yeah. disclosure, I actually, just for those that are listening, full disclosure, I actually work uh, my investments are through Nahani and one other of her colleagues. And I have to tell you, amazing service amazing education i love what you've done for me so far you've and i'll tell you the, the reason why and this is not meant to be an infomercial or anything like that but the reason why is that i feel when i'm in your capable hands you genuinely care about what's going to happen to me in the future uh, as does your colleague ken and i just that for me um, because you never, it's, it's money and money is a really prickly thing for people. And it's like, you know, when I first came to you guys, I was like, well, I don't really want you to know my business. I don't want to do that damn assessment. Are you out of your mind? Like, uh, and I think that if I felt that way, you can best be sure yeah. that a whole bunch of other people do too. Um, and I just didn't find that to be my experience with you guys. It was like, okay, let's just lay out the numbers. Let's, yeah. numbers are very, 
they're, they're, they're not biased. They're very like, you look at it, that's the number. That's what you're going to expect, right? Give or take mm-hmm. a few variables, whatever mm-hmm. that's going to be. Um, but the process of making the decisions, I just felt so safe. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, I will just say for anybody who's listening and going, huh, what just happened? Um, so we, I always sign a privacy agreement with my clients. And so I am never going to say Kathy is my client in public anywhere. Yeah. I just did though. That's me. Yeah. But if the, if my client says that that's different, but I am never going to initiate that conversation in public. We, you know, we know lots of people. And so I am never going to be the one who goes, Oh, Hey, here's your investments and blah, blah, blah. Like of course when work is work and then when we're doing something networking or whatever that's a different thing and so I'm never going to be the one who says that sometimes clients will you know give me a nice endorsement in front of a bunch of people which is lovely but it's your privacy and so we always talk about that with clients when we start as well um that I don't talk about you keep your information locked up all those good things so (laughs) I don't expect you to do a tv show about it Don't you worry. Don't you worry. And, yeah. and, and it, yes. it is very true. That was being initiated. So just to keep yeah. that clear. And by the way, it's a great segue. So if you've just tuned in, by the way, we should probably tell you what you're listening to. Uh, I'm Kathy Holmes, and I'm the host of Act Three on CHLY 101.7 FM. In the Zoom booth with me today is Nahani Ackroyd, and she is uh, now with. I'm sorry, what is the name of your organization again? Is it Ackroyd Financial Services Incorporated? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what made you decide to go on your own? Yeah, um, I guess a few changes. Uh, so I was with Freedom 55 Financial, yeah. um, which is was sort of under Canada Life, um, which was London Life. So Canada Life took over London Life. And then the Freedom 55 Financial brand, um, many of you may have joked about it over the years. Yeah. 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 Um, is being retired um, Uh, over the next couple of years. So that brand will be retired, will be Canada Life. Um, And then partly it's just the rules have changed about, you won't be a Canada Life advisor if you're over three years. Um, And so you need to either- What do you mean over three years? They've changed the structure. So if you're a brand new advisor or you're under three years, you're allowed to be, call yourself a Canada Life advisor, but, by I think it's early 2023, if you're still with with the company, but you're not under three years, there's rules about you have to either work for another advisor or their company or have your own company um, or or open as a sole proprietor. So you don't have to be incorporated. Um, And I just, you know, we were made aware of that in the spring and it just, you know, really ticked away in my brain. Um, And I just thought, you know, and talking to my accountant, right? Good financial advice. Um, Of course. Yeah, it was time. Uh, So, yeah, so actually she was fantastic with um, helping me find a lawyer who knew exactly what to do. So the two of them, they did all their side of it. And then uh, I'm still affiliated with Canada Life, and that's an official statement, affiliated with Canada Life. So nothing has changed for clients um, in terms of the products available through Canada Life, or if you already have products with me through that company, nothing has changed that way. Um, One of the things it allows me to do, though, is do my own branding and my own marketing. And over the spring and summer, I took the Responsible Investment Specialist Certification. And that's one of the things that really excites me about being able to be my own company now is that I can help clients who are interested in environmental, social and governance issues with their investing in a much more educated way and with a broader range of products. Canada Life has some, um, but there are other companies that have been doing this a really long time too and have great investment products with goals um, around impact investing or including certain companies or excluding certain companies in their investments. And so, especially as we sweltered through this summer, you know, um, climate climate change became really, really real. Um, Looking at your investing as well. How does that fit in with that? Um, And I think you and I, we've already talked a lot about social issues in this call. And so being able to choose your investments to some social goals as well. Um, And then governance, right? Like we've also talked about women in this. And so there's studies about women, boards that have more women on them, like corporate boards that have more women on them do better financially. Interesting. Oh, interesting, right? So um, yeah, and so there's 
there's some really good information out there about the evolution of how corporations run themselves. And if you become a stakeholder in that company then, right, or shareholder in it because you've invested into it, then you're allowed to ask questions. Um, and you can, yeah. And so these investment companies now can call up Starbucks, McDonald's and say, hey, you know what? We'd like to have a sit down. And they do. They take their call and they sit down with them and they talk about what are you doing? So it's not just about investing in wind power, solar power, you know, as a, yes, we support those, but also being able to influence the way traditional corporations might operate. Um, so it's pretty exciting to get into those. And I've been having those conversations with some clients over years and some clients not gotten them as clients because I couldn't offer them as much. Whereas now I can say, hey, you know what? We've got the world here um, that we can look at of Canadian mutual funds that are looking at environmental, social and governance issues. Um, so yeah, it's pretty neat that way. So that's part of what I'm excited about with it too. You know, I've noticed that there has been a, tr a really huge change in the way businesses are approaching not only finances, but just about everything. Um, I know that one of the one company that I'm associated with is, you know, working with what's called the Jedi principle, right, where it's diversity, inclusion, you know, equity, like all justice, all of the things that actually um, are making the world a better place. And it's more than a buzzword. It's actually an action. Are you seeing like I am companies really moving into that direction overall? Yeah, some for sure, right? Yeah, um, yeah. and be, being part of this Responsible Investing Association, and anybody here can look up Responsible Investing Association Canada, RIA Canada, mm -hmm. and you can look at the products available, you can look at what companies have signed on to it and are members, you can look at what advisors are members of it as well. And yeah, the companies that are doing this are really cool. Yeah. Um, and part of that is this organization is they have these great conferences. And because now it's Zoom, I can get to way more of them or, you know. Of course, of course. And, yeah. And so you're hearing global companies talking about what's holding them back. For instance, there was a silver company and they're trying to evolve and evolve because silver is a big part of the new technologies. But they said, what's holding you back in terms of being even more green and social and all this? And he's like, it's the technology. Yeah. The technology has not evolved to where they are. Um, is quite interesting. And then another electric company, huge, but they have committed all the way through their company to diversity, to inclusion, to all these things. And I'm like, this, like, it still gives me goosebumps, right? Like, uh, <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. Um, and so we need to live that, right? If that's what we want to see um, and value, then we need to live it as well. I have always admired you for a number of reasons that since, since I met you a few years back, um, I've admired the way that you, uh, you walk the walk, you don't just talk the talk. And I'm just so grateful to know that you were also, and if I, I want to bring this in because I think it's really important, even though it's not necessarily your company, but I think it, it states the values for which you hold so very dear and that you have, an, you were the found, one of the founders of a hundred women uh, who care. And I wonder if you would mind just sharing a couple of things about that. Sure. Yeah. If anybody isn't aware of the 100 women and 100 people movement, really, um, yeah. there are 100 men groups um, or 100 children, 100 youth. Um, so 100 plus women who care mid island is the group Kathy's talking about. But there are if you're listening from other parts of the island or watching from yeah. other parts of them, there's yeah. Comox, Campbell River, Cowichan has two, Port Alberni has a huge group, Victoria, Saanich. Um, and the, it's kind of that group sourcing donations and as a member you're allowed to nominate a charity the group we draw you know you draw three names at each meeting the group votes on who those you know which of those three is going to get the money and the idea being a hundred plus so four times a year over ten thousand dollars gets dropped on a local charity um and they don't you know you've worked in charities i've worked in charities yeah. you don't have to write a grant you don't have to write a report you just have to thank us you can do whatever you want with it so we don't care if you use it for overhead i'd rather you did actually because you can't get grants to fund overhead oh true um, and it's so needed you need the people who write the grants and you need the walls and the lights i know, and, I know. It's, yeah 
It's yeah. <laughs> I work in grant management and I got to tell you, it is so hard for smaller organizations, particularly to stand up against some of the larger players that have the infrastructure in place. And so, you know, yeah. knowing that you're able to, you know, potentially get 10 grand uh, yeah. to help really build, I think it's just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, it's such a neat model and such a neat thing. Um, it started in the States like 2006, I think, um, yeah. and is still going strong and is such, a, yeah, like you said, such a neat model. Um, so yeah, I encourage anybody to, who's interested, look that up, look up your local group and um, see what they're up to. Um, I did want to talk about my logo, if that's okay. I was just about to. Okay. I'm super glad that you are. I was like, I was like so not, now we're going to transition into something even cooler than, you know, the 100 women. Oh, I, I don't think it's cooler than the 100 women. But I it's, don't know, it's pretty darn cool. It's very, I, I, at this time, it's needed. Please go ahead and talk about okay. it. Okay, thank you. So um, I decided I wanted a logo not a, and to not do something that's a traditional, there's so many cliches in wealth management and insurance. And um, I didn't want to use those. I wanted something that's unique to me. And so Accroyd Financial, the initials are AF. And so there's an A and an F embedded in the logo. Um, and then we were looking at color and do we put in color? Originally, we weren't going to put in color. Um, and so my art, the artist who did this, who I hired is Melanie Hopkins. And she's a young Inuit artist um, who lives in Nanaimo. And I've known her family for eight years, at least, I think. Um, and she's actually looking at getting into tattoos. That's what she <laughs> is thinking she really wants to do. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, so she has an Insta page, uh, Inuk underscore Inc., which is quite neat. So she's putting, you know, puts up stuff that she's doing. And her mom is one of my good, good friends. And so we were, all of us were kind of looking at it without the color. And we were like, well, it reminds me of the medicine wheel. It reminds me of the medicine wheel. And so we got Melanie, Melanie put in the medicine wheel colors. Um, and my friend said, she's like, well, because you don't just look at one side of the person, you look at all sides of them and you get to know the whole person. And so that's why it's subtle. If you don't know the medicine wheel colors, it won't mean anything to you necessarily, but that's the underlying message for us with this. Um, and that it's really important to me that we honor Indigenous people um, who are here. I have clients who are Indigenous and I want them to look at it and go, okay, here's somebody who's different um, yes. and who I could probably work with and I can talk to. Um, because if clients can't open up to me and tell me their situation, I can't properly help somebody if they don't tell me the whole situation. Um, and so I hope that it sort of shows that inclusion and openness. Um, to people anybody who's sort of looking at it or interested um and i'm just so thrilled that melanie's doing this now because i've known her since she was she was young so <laughs> it's pretty wow neat. <laughs> yeah once again you know i and i said it earlier it's about feeling safe and when yeah. you're what you know when you're feeling safe with your money and you're feeling safe mm -hmm. with people who are who are progressive who are uh looking at the big picture and inclusion of all people mm -hmm. uh i just think that that's so fantastic and congratulations mm -hmm. for i mm -hmm. i'm very knowledgeable <laughs> about the medicine wheel and i personally yeah. feel that that we need to see more of that uh because we're really um we're more than one for lack of better words we're more than one color right yeah. there's so yeah. much that goes within us to the core right and i love yeah. the inclusion piece yeah when did you actually open your front doors for this as uh obviously you're doing it virtually right now but uh, <laughs> yeah tell me I mean, uh, say that way because i would imagine you have some good flexibility too right yeah it's, it's actually like i've kind of gotten used to it now at first i hated this right like absolutely hated it but i have some i would say really good clients now who i've never met in person um, and I also, I have this, I have an insurance, I have a license for the Yukon as well. And so I have clients in the Yukon, right, who I haven't met, but I could, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so August was the sort of, you know, end of August was the official kind of transition behind the scenes. Um, and then we are actually building a home office separate building as well. Um, and so that we just got the building permit. So I don't even want to speculate when we get open those doors. <laughs> but isn't it terrific that that's on the agenda? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And the business cards are ready. I just haven't had time to pick them up. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, 
yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, it feels good. It feels like I've, I've had another child, right? So, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I, I think that it's the perfect incarnation for walking ahead mm -hmm. and, and it couldn't happen to a more lovely human than you. I'm just I'm you, really delighted for you. Um, you. I know that you are a very humble woman. Uh, I know you are. Uh, <laughs> However, I also want to talk about your recent acknowledgements, even though the branding and everything is changing with Freedom 55 and all of that stuff, you were, you know, a very, very cool video was done about you. So can we talk a little about that? Sure. It is two years ago now. I know, I know, I know but it's still so present. Two it, years yeah. ago doesn't even feel like two years because of oh, the pandemic. It's just, I know. it's like, what? Yeah, what? exactly. Like, I know, like <laughs> it's April of 2020, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, 2019, several of my colleagues, including Ken, um, nominated me for an award uh, with Freedom 55, um, the Community Builder Award, and it was the inaugural year for it. Um, and it's actually now is the inaugural year. I was able, to, I was presented at the award in person, and they flew people to Nanaimo and did a video about me that was shown. So the first time I saw it was on a screen in a conference center in Halifax, just trying not to cry. And of course, because your kids were yeah. on top of it. It was I, like, I know. Oh and I didn't, I didn't see my kids interviewed. I had, they made me go stand somewhere else. So I didn't know exactly what they said. Wow. And nobody, like nobody told me. Um, and then that was 2019. So 2020, there were award winners for this, but there was no conference because of COVID. This year, no conference because of COVID. And then now there's no, no Freedom 55. So it'll be a Canada Life Award um, going forward. Wow. Um, yeah, so pretty tickled. And the people who came out and filmed, they were lovely. They were so nice. They made me feel really special. Um, and I've stayed in touch with one of them. And she's she's amazing, does amazing stuff in Winnipeg. Um, so yeah, it was it was really neat to do that. It's funny to look at it now because I'm like, oh, it does feel like so long ago. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So much I, has changed, but so much is the same too, right? So I, I think mm -hmm. that it's still a testament to the things that you do, even if it was two years ago. And and you know, I think that when you have something like that happen, you know, right now in the last two years has been really challenging for an awful lot of people. A lot of people are moving from feeling um, I, I, the, people that I never thought would become isolated are starting to become isolated, right? There's a new, I, I, for, I, I'm, I feel I'm very different than a lot of people because while people were telling me that they cleaned out their closets and they'd gotten their house all in order and they were doing this and that, I was uh, in my day job, I was working hard full-time helping older adults make sure that they were safe and sound through the BC211 initiative uh, out of the United Way of British Columbia. And so uh, I did not stop. It was no. like, oh my God. The good news is, is that while the crisis has been averted, there's still a number of older adults that are struggling out there. I know that, you know, that a lot of older adults really don't think about their money or the financial abuse that sometimes comes uh, from family members taking advantage of older adults. Um, and of course, I never want to throw you under the bus. So please, if you can't answer, don't worry. It's all good. Mm -hmm. I just wonder if there's anything that we could say to the older adult population to help them manage their money more efficiently or, or you know, assist them in making different choices as they are not going out, not doing the things they're used to doing because of COVID. Any thoughts to that? Um, I know there are really good resources around elder abuse and money, and I'm not, um, I don't have those at my fingertips, but I can certainly connect someone to them if they need it. Yeah. And I would say, trust your spidey senses. If you feel that something isn't right in what's being done with your finances, um, to trust that and to reach out if you can. Um, as advisors, we get good training on what to do if we think that we're seeing something. Yes. Um, and so it may be like a mother and their adult child come to see us and meet with us, but mom isn't talking. It's the child who's speaking more. Mm -hmm. And so part of what we're trained on is we should ask that person to leave and say, you know what, I just need to talk to your mom on her own for a few minutes. Yeah. And just to be able to talk to her and see where she's at. Um, there are many children I meet who are doing great 
things for their adults, Absolutely. parents, amazing things. And to step up and do that um, takes a lot, right? Really uh, um, but if you are an older adult or you're near someone and you are not sure if things are okay for them, um, it happens. I see it with people with brain injury as well. Yeah. Um, because yeah. you, you might look okay and you might think your brain's working just fine, um, but it might not be. And I have seen some terrible things um, being done to people there too. So if you have any sense that someone near you has a problem, there are resources and probably best is Elder Abuse BC. Um, we'll get Googling that, we'll get you to some really good resources. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's um, also the uh, British Columbia Critical Response Network and okay. SAIL BC. And all you have right. to do is note that at the bottom, because this will be on YouTube. And of course, we hope that you're mm -hmm. subscribing to the channel, but you can find those links will be part of the notes down below for sure. Perfect. Thanks. Um, yeah. I think it's important that we recognize that. Yeah. Can I touch on something else you said? I love it. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Which is as a caregiver. Yeah. Right. We have a lot of people who have been caregiving for people through this, through the crisis lines, through the hospices, our healthcare people, and they're tired. Yes. It's been a long haul. And caregivers at the best of times don't necessarily take care of themselves, yeah. right? Because you're giving and giving and giving. And I, I'm starting to see some cracks yep. in people. And you've held it together for a really long time. And now's the time to really dig in and make sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, and so if somebody's having mental health kind of stuff or challenges, there's public resources, but also if you have a group benefits program, you probably have something called an employee assistance program, yes, confidential yes. counseling. It's free through your work. Um, I know the province has great resources as well. There's local resources. Um, there's lots of help available. That's free. If you are in any kind of like, Hey, you know what? I think I actually need some help here. Um, talking to your doctor, um, or your clinic, right? Your nurse practitioner about your situation. Um, but getting our walks in, right? Like I stopped walking for ages there. I was like, I love walking. And I got like, before I got vaccinated and Delta ramping up, I got really like, I'm like, I don't want to be near people like at all, even outside. Cause people weren't moving over when we're walking, they're still yeah. walking right at you. And I'm like, move over. Like, yeah. and so then I'm getting all worked up and I'm like, well, that's not helping. And so I just kind of stopped going for walks and getting my fresh air. Right. I still get my exercise, but not my fresh air. And I'm trying to work that back in now. Cause I'm like, okay, come on. And I don't like the heat. Like, so in the summer, I'm like, I'm like, stay out of the sun. Um, well, it was a particularly hot season. It we really have never was. seen those temperatures. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. So, but checking in on the people around you, like, you know, especially if you know, they're in a caregiving kind of role, they've been holding it together a long time. Yeah. Um, and it, now we're going into winter, which is typically a harder time too. So um, yeah. yeah, I check in on the people around you. Um, I know I try to, but I, sometimes I don't, and I get in my own head and I'm like, okay, this is what I can manage. But a couple of calls to other people can feel so good. Um, it really can. And getting yeah. out, you know, I, I know that with the passport uh, and with the uh, for those that have their double vaccinations, I, I just I want to bring up the vaccination piece just for a quick second um, in regards to from a from a just a, as you're talking about that self care piece. Um, you know, I I have an autoimmune disease and. And anybody who listens to the program knows it's been a rough couple of years. Um, it had nothing to do with COVID, but it was a rough couple of years. And so, you know, in just trying to gain my health back again, I know that I've seen a lot of people get very high strung about people that are not vaccinated. We don't know what their story is. I really struggle with that. I mean, I want everybody to be vaccinated. I've got an 86 year old mother in love. I'm autoimmune. Many people I know are autoimmune. I don't want anybody to get sick. And I also don't know what's going on in other people's heads. And so I think it's really important that we're just as Bonnie Henry has so lovingly said for the last two years, just be kind, 
right? If you can't understand or you don't know what's going on, you know, I just learned that my best friend had picketers in front of her, her store. She lives in Alberta uh, in front of her store because her staff was wearing masks and people were pissed off that there were masks in the store. And so they were picketing, if you can imagine picketing her store. And I just want to, you know, I just, it makes me crazy to think that this last couple of years, it's been a rough couple of years for everybody for different reasons, yeah. but for everybody. Yeah. Come on now. Sanity. Yeah. I, yeah. Just, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all and step back. <laughs> just step back, right? This message brought to you by Kathy Holmes. That's, <laughs> no reaction. that's right. That's me yep. and my soapbox just yep. right now. Just you got taller. Yep. I got a little taller. That's right. I got a little deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be safe, be kind, easy. be calm, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. do the same with your money. Be safe, be calm, and be kind to yourself. It's yeah. it's not selfish to pay yourself first. No, not at all. And to be kind if you don't know things about your money. Yeah. Ask, right? We're yeah. all we all want you to know. Um, and if somebody's going to judge you for not knowing something about your money and being willing to ask, that's not who you want to work with, right? And you go, yep, that not person's not for me. Um, yeah. You know, you was at the top of the hour we were talking about people in our age group suddenly kind of finding ourselves going, oh my goodness, you know, this retirement, this age number is coming awfully quickly. Um, and again, everyone is different. Everybody needs to just really reflect on where they're at and where they want to be and where they want to go. And so that's a very personal decision. But if you could, um, and this is not the question of like, if you could teach somebody something, but I'm just curious about that very specifically that age group between 50 and 65, you know, if you could, if you could remind people to ensure they've got one thing done for themselves, what might that look like for you? Oh, one thing really is being honest with yourself and looking at it, like be brave enough to look at it. Yeah. And often it's, often it's better than people think, um, because we play these things in our heads that get us, you know, we're like, oh, it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. But you're list sometimes we're listening to our friends or colleagues at work and things and talking about it. But what somebody else needs to live on might not be what you need to live on. And so people are like, well, so and so said they need this much. I'm like, that's their situation. Your situation might be completely different. Um, and so everybody really is different. And so, yes, talk, talk. And I love that people are actually talking about money together because we often don't. But don't assume that you need what somebody else has. It's the same thing. Do you need the same cell phone as somebody else? Do you need the same computer? Do you need the same couch? Your needs with a couch might be completely different than somebody else's needs with a couch. Yes. So uh, office chairs, right? <laughs> like we've all got, <laughs> there's different needs. Um, yeah. Do you like to do your hair or not like to do your hair? Those are different approaches to life, really. Yeah. So let's talk about those things and realize you're not necessarily what somebody else has or doesn't have, doesn't mean that you should have or not have the same thing. Um, it's really about your situation and what you need to go forward, to be safe, to be happy, to be content at the very least. Right. So yeah, yeah. Sure. But, but not looking at it doesn't make it better ever, <laughs> uh, ever. You know, it's that head in the sand, the ostrich head in the sand. Right. And just like, yeah. you just, if it's not going to change the situation, unless you pay attention to it. And you might not need to make a change too. You might be fine and you might be fine as you are, but why not know that? Yeah instead yeah. of worrying about it. Why lose sleep about it if you don't have to, right? Like at least go, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm okay. Oh, all right, that's all right. <laughs> like sometimes I'm telling people you actually could spend like a lot more, <laughs> right? Or some more or yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's different for everybody. It really is. It's very much different for everybody. And it's good that we have these wonderful options. We're now at my favorite part of the show, believe it or not. I can't believe our hour is just to build up. It goes so quick because there's so much to talk about, as on, especially on this topic, right? There really yeah. is a lot that that influences the decisions that we make day in and day out. The the I think the best decision that I can share with the community is that you are now 
Um, you're now, your organization is Ackroyd Financial Services, and I'm super, super excited. <laughs> I usually, early on in the program, tell people to go get a piece of paper and a pen, but I forgot to do that. So now I'm hoping that people are going to grab it real quick yeah. because we are approaching the end of the program, and Nahani is going to be able to share her information with you and how you can touch base with her directly to get some terrific advice. But as people are going to get their piece of paper, because I neglected to tell them to go get it earlier, how about we do my other favorite part of the show, which is if you could show somebody something, teach somebody something, share something from your own experiences in this journey, mm. what's the wisdom and what's the takeaway for you? Mm. What would I share? Um, I think, you know what, I'm going to choose this time. Um, the tax-free savings account is this amazing tool and it is almost always misunderstood like 90 percent of the time often people say oh i have one at the bank but there's nothing in it or there's five thousand dollars in it but it's just in cash and so to me those are all signs that the person doesn't know enough about what it can do for them yeah. um, and so that's where i will start i'll back it up i'll go okay so what do you know about it and what can it do for you and then i'll say these are my favorite things about what it can do for you and the key part about it is it's tax-free income when you decide to draw money out of it. So it's great for lower income seniors because it, on paper, you can look low income, but you can be drawing money out of it and you'll still qualify for your various benefits as a lower income person. Um, if you move into care with Island Health, they take 80% of your income, but this doesn't show on paper as part of your income. And it can often, I'm talking to people about using it as a tool when one part of a couple makes most of the retirement income. And if the other person has very low retirement income, depending on what their costs are, if this person moves into care, Island Health takes 80% of their income, this person may not have enough money left to run the house. Let alone they've also got a partner now who is probably in a poor health situation yeah. and needs things. So why, so if we can do things to help equalize a little bit and make some money available, to people but it's also great if you're really wealthy because it's tax-free income so and it can be invested to your risk tolerance so it is an amazing little tool um, that i encourage people to look up and learn more about and the best way they can look it up and learn more about it is to give you a call directly so now that they've gone to get their piece of paper why we've shared the wisdom how about you tell people how they can reach you you bet um one of the easiest ways just google nahani Ackroyd. um but 250 Seven five six six zero six four is my cell phone. It's the best way to reach me. Um, but if you're going to call, and otherwise, um, Nahani N A H A N N I at Acroid A C K R O Y D Financial dot com. So my new email address. Um, and the website is just changing names right now. So if you Nahani Acroid dot com or Acroid Financial Services, it'll come up as well. Um, are you also on Facebook uh, yet with your new organization and all the uh, social media uh, platforms? Uh, yeah, I have had a Facebook page for business for a while, so it is still there. And yeah, I'm in the transition phase, so it might not quite look tidy yet, but it is still there and certainly through that or LinkedIn as well. Um, yeah, Accroyd Financial Services. You'll find her. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's been a delight to have you. I always love sharing any amount of time with you. You always make me feel so good. And I really want to thank you for that. I really want to uh, uh, remind people, I, you know, that that your your money is not as complicated as you think it is. And when you've got great advice from great people, you can take it a long, long way. So I just, you know, want to thank you for all the things that you do for our community, for uh, a lot of people's financial uh, well-being, and for just being an all-around incredible human being. Thanks so much for being with us today. Oh, thanks so much, Kathy. And right back at you. Thank oh, you for what you do. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say. Well, that does it for another episode of Act 3. We're super, super glad that you joined us today. Go ahead, please, and check us out on YouTube. Uh, you will find some of the information that Nahani and I talked about today in the notes section of the, uh, of the broadcast. Please make sure you like and subscribe and share, 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 and always tune in on Mondays on CHLY 101.7 FM for Act 3. Have yourself a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Bye for now.